Hello and uh, welcome to this video about my fully interlocked lever frame for my scale 4 model of Clare Station in Suffolk. The lever frame itself is a, um, an etching provided by the Scale 4 Society produced by the uh, Shropshire and Herefordshire area group and known colloquially as the Shag lever frame. Um, there is now a Shag version 2 lever frame which has various additions um, and it's easier to take apart and put back together again. Um, we will see what the YouTube um, censoring makes of the fact that it uses the uh, acronym for the Shropshire, Shropshire and Herefordshire area group. Um, what I have done um, with this lever frame to make it interlocked is uh, each lever terminates in a little uh, tab which then passes through um, a the head of a servo which is turns to either give a channel for the tongue to, to work to move through uh, a slot um, or uh, to block that tab from moving so that it locks the lever. Um, if I take this lid off, uh, if I take that bit there off first and then I take this off, you'll see a, a scary quantity of electronics that we'll, we'll go into in a moment. You can see down there, under the lever, there are each the bottom of each lever terminates in a little round um, uh, top of a servo, uh, which then turns to have a, a path that the lever can pass through, or a, or a block that it can't. Um, the uh, mechanism that holds all of those lever all, all of those servos in place um, is a uh, uh, a lot of layers of laser cut perspex that, that uh, was able to be cut accurately um, so that uh, I maintained the uh, gap between the, the, uh, the levers and all those good things. Um, finding some servos that were only 8 millimeters wide, um, they're slightly smaller than the, the usual um, um, Tower Pro equivalent that you find on eBay, but um, they were not particularly expensive. I think I paid something like two pound fifty each for them, that sort of order. The um, the electronics in this, uh, and, I, and and those who followed this for some time may know that um, I had actually built this lever frame some time ago. Um, uh, this uses um, circuit boards from the Model Electronics Railway Group, the Merg. Um, and it uses their their C bus system, which is a variant of um, the uh, automotive CAN bus. Um, I use three different modules. Um, the the big one with all the wires sticking out of the top, which you can see in the middle, uh, that is um, the uh, CAN ACE three, and that uh, basically you connect all of the um, micro switches that the levers operate up um, via a little diode matrix um, and when you pull a lever uh, that circuit board puts out onto the C bus um, either an, an on or off event depending on what the lever's done. So if you pull the lever from being off to being on you'll get an on event and if you put it back again you'll get an off event. The Three circuit boards on the bottom uh, are um, CANAC 8 boards, which are uh, again another standard CBUS board, um, and they are modified using the, to use the CAN servo software so that um, effectively they can take a event and um, change a servo. Um, and you can see that uh, here are the connecting blocks. Um, for each of the each of the servos, so each lever has a servo underneath it, and by sending an appropriate event, you can make the servo lock or unlock the lever. Now, I had all this implemented um, using JMRI, the Java Modern Railway um, program, 
Um, but obviously, in order to make the locking work, you then had to have a PC running, which was um, a bit of a pain. Um, so we worked out that actually all of the locking could be done uh, using um, the Merg's CAN CUND software, which actually runs on exactly the same circuit board as the CAN server. So that's uh, these two uh, on the outside here. Um, and what they, those boards do is you can set up a conditional that says when you've seen this event and this event and this event, then send another event. Um, so what I was able to do was uh, make it so that for each lever, um, you know, if you have seen an on event on this lever and an off event on this lever, then that means that the lock on the third, the third lever is, is, is locked or unlocked. Um, and this then means, of course, that the whole thing is done effectively um, on some circuit boards in the little box. So all I have to do is plug the layout in and the interlocking works um, rather than having to uh, crank up a PC and run JMRI. So with the box reassembled, we can try and go through a few locking scenarios and uh, signal a few trains. So for a start, let's try and signal a through train that's coming from Cambridge, which is the left hand side of the uh, uh, box, towards Cavendish and Long Melford, uh, Long Melford on the right. So in order to signal this, um, we would need to be able to pull off the starter signal, sorry, the, the, the home signal 2, the starter signal 3, the advanced sig starter 4, and then we will be able to pull off the distant that's down here. Now in order to do that, we would clearly be, need to put the points um, at 18 over here, the, the end of the loop would have to be into the straight road, and also uh, because you're taking a train over a facing point, you have a facing point lock. So as things stand, we would find that uh, signal 2 will be locked because the facing point lock isn't pulled. Uh, signal 3 will be locked because uh, the loop is the wrong way. So at the moment we can't actually pull those two levers at all. So if we pull signal uh, the facing point lock 5 then that will allow us to pull lever 2 which would allow us to take a, take a train into the uh, into the platform uh, we couldn't actually signal one in the other direction because we don't have enough um, uh, of a of a margin after the uh, uh, after the loop so in order to be able to pull number 3 off we have to pull 18 so let's just check at the moment that's locked if I pull 18 then we should be able to pull 3 uh, obviously you'd only be able to pull the advanced starter if you had a, a token but we haven't quite implemented that yet but if I pull 4 we're now in a situation where we've got a through route with all the signals clear so we can pull the distant and obviously with the distant pulled all of these signals become locked in the reverse position and you can't actually put them back. Okay so we can now reverse the signals and clearly we have to do this in the reverse order so first we put back the distant then we can put back any of the, uh, the signals then we can restore the facing point lock to unlocked and then we can put back the end of the loop. So if we want to go in the opposite direction we would have to again reverse the point at this end of the loop number six. We have the starter here 23. Uh, the crossover is obviously the right way because it's set for coming down there. We'd need the facing point lock 19 and then we could pull 24, the uh, home, 
and then ultimately we could pull 25 the uh, the distant so if we try that so for a start we can see that uh, 23 and 24 are both locked so if we pull 5 the uh, sorry get it right pull 6 this end of the loop then that's pulled that one across um, that would allow us to pull 23 so we could actually have a platform uh, a train leaving the platform uh, then if we have 19 then we can pull 24 which would let a train into the loop and then because we now have a through route with all the signals clear we can pull the distant and again that then means that all of these are locked Ooh, yeah <laughs> are locked in the reverse position um, what you found there is that in some cases the dock is a little bit loose and you can just push it past the micro switch um, but it won't actually go and the only thing you can do is put it back again so it's not actually a, a, a big um, a big problem so restoring that route we put uh, the signals back and then we can restore the uh, the points so what other examples have we got? Well, obviously, you could only signal a, uh, a train out of the yard using the shunting signal 8 if 7 is reversed. So let's just try that. So at the moment, 8 is locked. But if I pull 7, then you can pull 8. And obviously, if 8 is pulled, then 7 is locked in the reverse position. And similarly, you could only pull the shunt signal 21 to allow something out of the loop if 20 has been pulled. And obviously it doesn't make any sense. You can't pull 20 if 18 hasn't been reversed. So you should find that 20 is locked and 21 is locked. But if I were to pull 18, then I could pull 20 and 21 and obviously having pulled 21 then 18 and 20 are now locked um, obviously if you have the facing point lock pulled so for example if I pull 19 over here then that will then lock 18 so you can't change the point so there you go um, you've got some fun interlocking I can see this is going to uh, confuse um, uh, guest operators who are going to have to learn how to do it prototypically um, but uh, I think it adds an interesting dimension to uh, uh, to a lever frame so hope you like that thanks a lot